First, a quick recap of, well, Joe Biden's sippy cups, pathetic, incoherent, at times even angry and unhinged performance in Geneva today on top of his disastrous G7 meetings. Let's be clear. The so-called summit with Vladimir Putin did absolutely nothing to advance any American interests in any way. That's a fact. Instead, Vladimir received a massive platform in exchange for zero concessions whatsoever, and Putin then used that platform to take shot after shot after shot at our country, the United States of America. Joe, of course, was nowhere to be found correcting the record um, because he was afraid to stand next to Vladimir, probably because he's not capable of doing it. Putin did not commit to ending the cyber attacks against our country. He didn't take responsibility for the hijacking of over 100 U.S. companies, nine federal agencies. He didn't agree to free Americans, now wrongfully in prison in his hostile regime of Russia. He didn't take responsibility for the Havana syndrome attack against U.S. diplomats. He didn't agree to stop poisoning and killing his political enemies. He didn't agree to curtail his military aggression in Eastern Europe. Europe and around the world, and yesterday Russia conducted, oh, a massive naval drill, oh, about 300 miles off the coast of our state of Hawaii, the first time they've done this since the Cold War. Hmm. I wonder, Joey, if that was a coincidence, or do you think your pal Vladimir did it on purpose? We all know the answer. Now, Putin also gifted a spy satellite to the Mullahs in Iran. How generous of him. Joe Biden was unable, unwilling to hold Putin accountable for anything. As the chairman of the Human Rights Foundation put it today, even on MSDNC, Putin got what he wanted. Does that surprise anybody? Remember, just after Joe shuttered the Keystone XL pipeline, high-paying career jobs for our fellow Americans in the energy sector, skill-specific jobs that he just took away with the stroke of a pen, then Joey turns around and gives uh, Vladimir Putin, you know, the nod. He, he literally says, OK, on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline into Germany. Uh, that would bring the country that we're helping to defend against Russia, that would bring them closer and help make Russia richer again. And by overriding the State Department recommendation, Joe was told not to do it, and he did it anyway. He gave the waiver and lifting all U.S. sanctions on the project. And what do we get in return for this grand gesture uh, that will enrich Vladimir Putin and Russia? Nothing. We got nothing. Appeasement doesn't work, has never worked, never will work, especially when the commander-in-chief is like Joe, frail and weak and constantly, cognitively, well, weakened. Putin doesn't respect and he doesn't fear Joe Biden in any way. So let me be clear. We are not rooting for that hostile actor, that murderer, that killer from that hostile regime. He's a killer. He's a thug. And frankly, he's evil. He's a criminal in charge of a massive nuclear stockpile. So obviously, it is critical that the U.S. has a president who is sharp, mentally alert, tough, tenacious, and a president willing to turn the screws on Vladimir to keep him in check. Unfortunately, Joe is not that guy. This week, Joe bumbled and bumbled his way through Europe, embarrassing the U.S. every step of the way. Today, he showed up to the summit with a pile of flashcards that he was constantly referencing and had a hard time keeping up with. Following the summit, no joint press conference. Why? Because the administration knew darn well Joe would be humiliated, and for good reason. Instead, Joe delivered a short, scripted speech from a teleprompter. If I had to bet, it was probably written by his staffers before they left Washington. And get this, during the remarks, well, President Sippy Cup once again botched his favorite line from your Declaration of Independence. Don't believe it? We got the videotape. I made it clear to President Putin that we'll continue to raise issues of fundamental human rights. Because that's what we are. That's who we are. The idea is we hold these truths self-evident that all men and women, we haven't lived up to it completely, but we've always widened the, the arc of commitment and included more and more people. All men and women, you know, created by the thing. Oh, oh, you know the thing. God. Joe, God, the creator of everything. Joe was clearly flustered. Look at your screen. At one point, he took off his coat, dropped it on the ground, took off his sunglasses, and then put them back on. 
Then he took them off again and back on again. Uh, as you can see, Joe did not look particularly sharp. After his short prepared remarks, Joe took a few questions from a handful of, once again, pre-selected reporters. Why have any spont spontaneity in life? But even that was too strenuous for President Sippy Cup. Now, uh, just watch as Joe becomes completely unhinged after a very normal, reasonable question, e even from a fake news CNN reporter. Take a look. Looks like Grandpa got agitated at the reporters. Anyway, could you imagine if that was President Trump who said that? Everyone, fake news, CNN, they'd be apoplectic right about now, and that would last for weeks and weeks on end. President Trump is attacking the free press, they would explain. But anyway, the hysteria would be off the charts. Instead, the Biden superfans at CNN, they're more than happy to take a tongue lashing from the big guy. A few minutes after that outburst on the tarmac, Joe was uh, still very agitated, whining that the media was being too negative. Apparently, Joey thinks he deserves more praise from his friends in the media mob that put him in the media mob protection program as a candidate, and now he's in the media mob presidential protection plan. Take a look. To be a good reporter, you got to be negative. You got to have a negative view of life. Okay, it seems to me the way you all you never ask a positive question. Why, in fact, having agreement? We'll find out. The thing that always amazed me about the questions, and I apologize for having been short on this before. If you were in my position, would you say, "Well, I don't think, man, anything's going to happen. It's going to be really rough. I think it's going to really be bad." You guarantee nothing happens. Joey, I don't remember anyone asking why you stood with the former Klansman that filibustered the Civil Rights Act of 64, Voting Rights Act of 65, uh, to stop the integration of schools and school busing because you thought public schools would become racial jungles. That would be a tough question. I don't remember you ever being asked that question. Ultimately, zero agreement struck, so the so-called big summit wasn't so big at all. Joe isn't worried. He thinks that Putin will change his malignant ways because he wants the, the world community to like and to respect him. And that's not how it works, Joe. Is Joe really that dumb? I'm hoping he's just playing dumb on TV. Now, Putin doesn't give a rip what the United States or what Europe thinks or feels. He cares about power. He cares about money. He runs his country like a mob boss. He will continue to kill his political rivals, and he will conduct criminal activities all around the world and probably bribe top children uh, vice presidents moving forward, unless he's seriously challenged. Now, sanctions, financial penalties, the expansion of U.S. oil, gas are critical tools for American peace through strength diplomacy with Russia. But sadly, Joe Biden prefers the different approach, appeasement, giving up energy independence, getting rid of American jobs, but waivers for Vladimir. As we stated, that approach is never going to work. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.